Lambert's here in beautiful downtown St. Lambert. It's always a pleasure to be with you and to gather as fellowship, fellowship in the Word of God and to sing praises to His name. And in this, our theme today is foundations. What does it mean, a foundation to you and to each and every one of us? Our scripture says, they are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future. And we have all been called to store up for ourselves and for this church the riches of a good foundation. And that word is not a noun, it's actually a verb. And so today I have the pleasure of welcoming somebody who you should know because their face is on our poll. I'd like to welcome Mathieu Graton and his partner, Marie Larence to come and say a few words to the congregation. And we had a wonderful meeting last week where we discussed and we talked about his desires and wishes and why he went from a job to this vocation, similar to why all of us move on to other things. And so he's not going to speak politics. He's going to speak from his heart on why he has decided to go and build these foundations that we're going to talk about today. So, Mathieu, Marie Larence, come. Let's welcome. Good morning, everyone. Believe me, this is very stressful. <laughs> I used to be a comedian. I'm still a comedian. But this is uh, my first speech in a church. First, I would like to thank uh, Reverend Perron for the inv invitation. Um, this, I met this man in, I think he changed my life. Uh, I had the privilege uh, of, uh, to visit the church and I saw all the potential uh, for, for humanity projects or many things. This guy has a lot of ideas. Um, as you can see, English is not my first language, so <laughs> sometimes I may not use the good words, but uh, I'm here to... to I, I, I will be very short. Um, a month ago, like three months ago, I decided to go in politics. Before that, my wife and me were a foster family. And we had a kid at home with... Uh, well, this kid was on the spectrum of autism. Like my son, I have a 21 years old son who's also autistic. And the kid we had at home had to live because it was not working with uh, we were not able to, uh, to, not to take care of him, but to provide the, 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 good, uh, the good thing for him. He moved on, on a farm and now he's very well. And waiting for another kid, we ask ourselves, what can we do? So we've been waiting like three months, four months, waiting for a phone call to tell us, uh, there's another, another kid looking for a family, but the call didn't come, so uh, we thought maybe uh, we could help in another way. So I made the very difficult choice to go in the politic world. Uh, <laughs> it's a very difficult job. Uh, I've been doing door by door since the last three, uh, four weeks. But the good thing is I'm meeting people. When someone opens his door and takes the time to listen to me and I take the time to listen to them, this is a gift. Uh, I feel like I'm lucky to have this time with every citizen. In the past years I've been involved with handicapped people, with autistic people, uh, doing shows, like I said, I'm a comedian, but today I'm not funny. <laughs> Thank you for the laugh. She laughs at me too, so... Okay. <laughs> You're probably better than me. Um, what I want to do in the next years here, so as, as the Reverend said, I'm not here to talk, to speak politics. Uh, I have a... I want to do. Uh, I want to work with citizens. I'm not a real politician. If I'm elected, I will be the the, the strange one in the group. Um, 
I want to make sure that here in the community, we make, we, we make sure that everybody, everyone remembers that we, we're all uh, a, a part of this community. Even if we don't speak the same language, even if we don't come from the same culture or country, um, we have to remember that we are all uh, humans, citizens, Quebecers, Canadians, um, and what I want to do in the next years is that I, I want to work with you, I want to listen to you, I want to listen to the teachers, the nurses, the doctors, uh, the reverend. <laughs> and make sure we can, in four years, have something to present, like, oh look, what we did in four years. Of course, the prime minister has a bilan, sorry for, is it the good word, the bilan? But here, in the writing, we could also have a good dealer and say we did something all together. So, um, that's why I'm going in politics. As I said, my son is 21, he's autistic, he still needs me. But he, uh, he, he acquired a lot of autonomy in the last years, so it, that gives me more time to help people in another way. <laughs> so, this is the end of my speech. <laughs> thank God. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Reverend. Uh, it's a pleasure for me and my wife to be with you today. So, don't forget to go vote and vote often. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you again. And uh, I hope to see you in the next years and uh, work with you and listen to you. Thank you very much. And our opening hymn, how appropriate, God, my hope on you is founded, number 529.
but toujours avec nous. Et avec ton esprit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now, in preparation to hear God's word, let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered by your Holy Spirit into one, may show forth your power among all peoples, to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Lecture du livre de Jérémie La parole qui s'adressa à Jérémie de la part du Seigneur en la dixième année de Sédécias, roi de Juda. C'était la dix-huitième année de Nabucodonosor. À ce moment-là, les troupes du roi de Babylone assiégeaient Jérusalem alors que le prophète Jérémie était enfermé dans la cour de garde au palais du roi de Juda. Sédécias, roi de Juda, qui avait enfermé, lui reprochant, « Pourquoi profères-tu ces oracles? Voici ce que dit le Seigneur. » Je vais livrer cette ville au pouvoir du roi de Babylone. Il s'en emparera. Voici le récit de Jérémie. La parole du Seigneur s'adressa à moi en ces termes. Le fils de ton oncle, Shalom, Anaméel, viendra te dire, « Achète mon champ qui se trouve à Anato » car c'est à toi qu'il appartient de l'acquérir en vertu du droit de rachat. Comme le Seigneur l'avait annoncé, Anaméel, le fils de mon oncle, vint vers moi dans la cour de garde pour me dire, « Achète mon champ qui se trouve à Anatot, dans le pays de Benjamin, car le droit à la succession te revient, de même que le droit de rachat. Fais donc cette acquisition. » Alors, je compris qu'il s'agissait de la parole du Seigneur. J'achetai donc ce chant à Anaméel, fils de mon oncle, le chant qui se trouvait à Anatot, et je lui pesai l'argent, dix-sept cycles d'argent. Je rédigeai un contrat sur lequel je mis mon sceau en présence des témoins que j'avais convoqués, et je pesai l'argent sur une balance. Je pris le contrat de vente, l'exemplaire scellé, les prescriptions et les règlements, et l'exemplaire ouvert, et je remis le contrat de vente à Baruch, fils de Niria, fils de Masia, en présence d'Anaméel, fils de mon oncle, en présence des témoins qui avaient signé le contrat de vente, et en présence de tous les judéens qui étaient présents dans la cour de garde. En leur présence, je donnais cet ordre à Baruch. Ainsi parle le Seigneur, le Tout-Puissant, le Dieu d'Israël. Prends ces documents, le contrat de vente scellé que voici et le document ouvert que voilà, et place-les dans un récipient de terre cuite pour qu'ils se conservent longtemps. En effet, ainsi parle le Seigneur, le Tout-Puissant, le Dieu d'Israël. Dans ce pays, on achètera encore des maisons, des champs et des vergers. Parole du Seigneur. A 
Our psalm this morning is Psalm 91. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the Lord, and from the end of the He will cover you with pinions, under his wings will you find refuge. His faithfulness is the shield of the Lord. You will not fear the terror of the night, or the arrow that flies by day, or the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or the destruction that wastes at noonday. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my a reading from 1 Timothy, chapter 6. Of course, there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment. For we brought nothing into the world, so we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. For those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time. He who is blessed and only sovereign the King of kings and the Lord of lords. It is he alone who has immortality and dwells in the unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. And as for those who are in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty, or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. For they are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the Church.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at this gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus, in like manner, evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into the place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets, they should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Because although the foundation was laid, 
and it was strong. It was in crooked. And they found by the time they got up to the 14th floor, the wall was going the wrong way. So he had to bring it back. Interesting example of sometimes our foundations can seem solid, but are they square? Are they in the right place? Our text today about foundations comes from Timothy. Paul is speaking to the people. And he speaks to the people about their faith. Fight the good faith of the faith that will take hold of your eternal life. What more of our future than is our eternal life? We are here for a short time, whether it's a few hours, and I've witnessed that when I baptized an infant who died within a few hours, or whether we're in the hundreds of years or somewhere in between, but eternity is just that, it's forever. And do we have a faith that will take hold of an eternal life that we truly believe that we have been called and that we have made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses? Confession? In other words, have we become good witnesses? And Guy and I, we had a little discussion over in the park. It's amazing what can happen in the park. And we were talking about confession, or he was talking about confession, and how interesting it is that when Jesus Christ made the confession, he wasn't confessing in a guilty way. But by saying nothing, he was confessing in a positive way that he was the answer to eternal life because he did come back and he showed himself to other people. But this text goes on to say of what we are supposed to do, those of us in the present age who are rich. And now speaking here in St. Lambert, we are rich. We are rich in many things. We are rich in our jobs, our work, our houses, the food that we eat. We have been indeed blessed here in St. Lambert. For those of you who are in the present age are rich, and they are to do they are to do good and to be rich and ready to share. But this word rich is a verb. It's pluteo, in other words, to do good works, to be generous, and to share what we have. And although we can go to work from Monday to Friday and we can have this great storehouse of gifts and goods, and we can give certain amounts away. What are we doing as far as our faith and the foundation of our faith? It goes on to say, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future. This word storing up means to lay down and as, as and up a good foundation. In other words, the first principles and fundamentals. The first principles and fundamentals of when this church was first laid out as a foundation and bricks and mortar and windows and wood was according to specific plans and diagrams and engineering drawings so that it would last for centuries. Similar with our own faith, that if we continue to lay out our faith by reading the scriptures through prayer, through communion one with the other, through study, we will continue to build a good, strong foundation. But if we allow ourselves through riches to be pulled away to do other things, the foundation of our faith becomes weak. It develops cracks. It allows other things like water to seep in, and as it freezes and melts and freezes and melts, it pushes it apart, and all of a sudden this foundation of faith that we thought we had, this foundation of this church that we thought we had, begins to crumble. And not only the foundation, but the whole life itself of that individual, that building, that structure, crumbles. Because other things have been dealt with. The owners of that building, once we sold it, they used it for a while, and then others just let it sit. But this building has been maintained, and especially over these past few years, we have verified the foundation, we have verified the bricks, we're in the process of verifying the roof. We're making sure that our doors open from the inside out. We're making sure that the walls are clean and neat and tidy, that there's proper lighting. We are continuing to build the foundation of this building and this footprint, not just for today, not just for 10 more years. I've been in ministry for 10 years. It went like that. Your first four years will go like that. We need to 
build this for eternity and eternal life. But we can listen, we can hope to hear, but it's this scripture, this text from Luke, where there was this rich man and he had everything that he needed and he would not listen. But Lazarus, the poor man, where the dogs would come and lick his sores, he went to heaven. But as it says, there's a great chasm between you that has been fixed. And that speaks of heaven, but unfortunately there's a great chasm between us here today and those who have refused to come to church, whether here in person or even online, for whatever reason. But their foundation of faith is beginning to crumble because they are keeping away from the fundamentals and principles of gathering together in church, one with the other. But it would be easy. Why don't we send somebody from the dead to speak to them? Well, somebody from the dead has already come back and spoken to us. We have it in our scriptures that we read each week. Jesus Christ was born. He was crucified. He was resurrected. And he came back to prove to us that there is life after death. I believe we are called, according to our possession and redemption, to really get an idea of that, we should speak to our notary, possession and redemption. <laughs> this beautiful story of Jeremiah, or from Jeremiah, where there's this field, and he is told by God to go and buy that field because it belongs to his heritage. He has the right of possession to in to take that field because it's part of his inheritance and his heritage. And then he is allowed to redeem it because he is of the same kindred, in other words, to buy it back. And we have these beautiful stories and we even have it in the law from Leviticus 25, 25. If a fellow countryman of yours becomes so poor that he sells part of his property, then his closest redeemer is to come and buy back what his relative has sold. When we built this church, we had to sell the old church because I guess at that time they couldn't afford both or they couldn't see the future of this footprint. In Ruth 4, verse 3, it says, And he said to the Redeemer, Naomi, who was returned from the land of Moab, has to sell the plot of land which belonged to our brother Elmelech. So I thought that I would inform you, saying, Buy it before those who are sitting here, before the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, redeem it. But if not, tell me so that I may know. For there is no one except you to redeem it. And I am after you. And he said, I will redeem it. It's still a mystery. It's still a hope. It's still a desire. But it was a hope and a desire when I was with Welcome Hall Mission. And we had one building on St. Antoine, about the size of this church, and we were falling over each other. We had children's programs and adult programs, and we were feeding people. We had a, a, a mission where people would be fed, and they would sleep, and it was, people were on top of each other. And we prayed, and we prayed, Lord, find us a building, and we looked at various other buildings. And finally, we found a building on Acorn Street. But this building was huge. This building was about from here to St. Denis Street, to Elm, to St. Denis, and probably up to Victoria. Imagine a footprint that big. And they were asking $700,000, and at that time we were a mission of maybe a million dollar budget. But we interviewed and we spoke and we prayed and we prayed and we prayed. And we had the opportunity to purchase that building. But the down payment was $178,000. And we were wondering on the day of the signing with the notary, where was that money going to come from? In what account could we pull it from? And we received the phone call from another notary who said, we have a check for you, you better come and get it. It was to the penny of the down payment the Lord provided for this building, which now houses a dental clinic run by McGill University with better equipment than most dentists one of the largest food banks, 50 housing units, our offices, and a few other things as well. And then once we had that, we decided that we needed even more space, so we bought the sixplex across the street. And that sixplex was crumbling, just like this building. So we got together with architects, and of course, every time we get together with people, the 
there's always someone going, yeah, yeah, but you know. Well, the sixplex turned into 31 apartments for people in transition. And then the Commissel, they were selling their building across the street from us. And Commissel is a restaurant that produces and processes food with freezers that trucks can actually drive in and unload and process the food so that when we give food to people, it's already processed and prepared. And the city of Montreal sold us their library section. We often wondered, where is the money going to come from? It came from prayer. It came from prayer, and now when we look at the foundations that we had to rebuild on each building, when we see the foundations on that footprint on Acorn and Duporcel, I invite you to go and take a look. Drop something off, too, by the way. They have a store that sells the goods that you donate to the people. But it also gives them away. We have specials where everything's a dollar. Because if somebody can't afford it, they're given it. And if somebody doesn't want charity, they want to pay, they can pay. I imagine, and I can see great things. You know that this building is almost full. The other day, we had a call for somebody that wanted to use the space, and Steve and I discussed where are we going to fit them in? Because we have to have room for our own people, right? We have plenty of room for our own people. But I see us as creating even more space on this footprint, working with our people of the city, of the province, and of Canada to work together to feed people, to nourish people, to encourage people, to build foundations in their life for eternal life. So I continue to ask you to pray for this building next door, that God can indeed work miracles, that he can transform that building. The plans are already made for it. Not our plans, somebody else's plans, and God's plans. So pray about the foundations in your life, the fundamentals of Jesus Christ being part of your faith. And pray, continually pray for the footprint of St. Barnabas, that we become the gateway to the nations to feed, to nourish, and to encourage one another and to bring all of them into eternal life. Amen. Let us stand together as we recite the Hero of Israel as a confirmation of our faith. Hero of Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Please be seated in prayer. The right of possession and redemption is yours if we listen and seek to do the will of God. We pray for the church that we may be the key people to be with both the rich and the poor, help them realize the presence of you, Lord, in their lives, to guide them equally. Pray to God, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the assurance of God's protection, that we may live in the shelter of God's presence, 
and protection, that we, not fearing the terror of the night or the arrows that fly by day, will know that those who love God will be delivered by him from the cares and concerns which overtake our lives. Praying to God, Lord, hear our prayer. Nous prions pour ceux qui nous est donné par notre Seigneur. Car nous devons nous rappeler que nous n'avons pas rien à porter dans ce monde. Donc, nous ne pouvons rester rien à retirer. Rechercher la droiture, la foi, l'endurance et la douceur pour nous aider à servir tout le monde. Prions le Seigneur. We pray for the poor among us, that all burdens may be lifted in their lives, and for the willingness of assisting organizations to bring the ways and means needed to relieve the burdens that are carried each day. Praying to God, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for and we pray for all who have faced the massive destruction of Hurricane Fiona, the loss of homes, the damage inflicted by the rain, the endurance and strength needed for the rescuers and resource people working to assist all who are requiring it. Praying to God, Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes all who repent and invites them to his table. Let us now confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humble and humble. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Que la paix du Seigneur soit toujours avec vous. Et avec ton esprit.
Christ, we behold your glory. Receive the offering of your people gathered before you, and open our hearts and mouths to praise your great salvation, the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to our hearts and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise for Jesus Christ our Lord, who came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. He calls his faithful servants to lead your holy people in love, nourishing them by your word and sacraments. And now, with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Donne-nous vos jeux et nous t'en prions sur vous. 
Father, nous sommes nos enfants, ce que nous pardonnons aussi à ceux qui nous ont offensé. Ne nous soumets pas à la tentation, mais de nous donner du mal, car c'est à toi qui est le règne de la puissance et de la gloire pour le siècle des siècles. Amen. En rendant ce Père, nous partageons le corps du Christ. Les dons de Dieu pour les peuples de Dieu.
love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.